حضرات جذبات کی کوئی زبان نہیں ہوتی ہے and I am only afraid that I keep on speaking in Urdu, I may take more time. And therefore, in order to finish my technical talk on time, I would prefer to go in the language in which we have studied the subject, and that is English. So I request that kindly don't mind that. And I would further request that those backbencher friends, we have plenty of chairs vacant in the front rows. Can you please come forward? Because this would be more or less kind of an interactive lecture. It is not something that I'm going to deliver a very philosophical kind of thing. So I wish that everybody gets involved in whatever we are going to talk henceforth. Thank you very much. इसको प्रेजेंटेशन मोड में करो। इस दिस ये प्रेजेंटेशन मोड में करो। डो इट इन द प्रेजेंटेशन। सो शुड आई स्टार्ट माय टॉक? ओके। सम ऑफ माय फ्रेंड्स आर इन द मोड ऑफ एन्जॉइंग। आई वुड सिंपली विश दैट प्ले पे योर अटेंशन फॉर जस्ट हाफ एन आर। आई बिलीव यू विल गिव मी ए मार्जिन ऑफ हाफ एन आर टाइम। इट वाज but I would try to, you know, accommodate the lecture because this is technical talk. We are not going to speak anything that is not desired. And therefore, half an hour time and your full attention is required so that we may both enjoy the interaction. Okay. So this is neutrosophic logic. It may not sound very comfortable initially, but as and when we progress, because here I have written a paradigm shift in logic theory and therefore let me begin with the logical uh, way of thinking into our daily life. So I would put certain questions here which are very trivial in nature but then you have to give the answer to all those questions. Why? Because I want all of you to get involved into the lectures that would follow for another 25 minutes. So here is the first question. Please read it and raise your hand. ये आमतौर से पांच साल के बच्चे सवाल पूछते हैं घरों में। So two, oh very many hands for this lady, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yes. I displayed the answer. This is a question which is really philosophical. Please think and raise your hand. Whose picture was Jen looking at? No, there was a hand on this side. No, you have to draw the interview. On that side, there was some hand. Yes, stand up. Stand up, lady. Yes. What did you answer? His own picture. How it can be? See, this man's father is my father's son. So the answer is, the man in the photo is Jayan's son. This man's father is my father's son. So he was looking at his son. Understand? See, this is logic. Okay, the last question. Oh, this is the tic-tac-toe which requires pen and paper and I ask you to draw, you know, three crosses. That uh, crosses in such a way that there should not be uh, three in a row and but there should be a minimum of six. So I mean this requires a pen and paper but I have given the answer here just in order to make a variety. But the last question is most important. And then after that I will start my lecture. something you are not allowed to open the bottle neither you are supposed to break the bottle yet 
you want to take out the coin from the bottle. Then this is one answer. Another answer from the back. Yes. Lady. Ah, this is this is not what we have done in the question. The question directly says, insert a cork in the neck of the bottle and put a coin in an empty bottle. In and not under the bottle. In and. Probably, this is not the audience which is really supposed to know this answer. This is a cork, you know. Those who have worked in the chemistry lab, yes. and if you have any experience of working with a cork, the cork can be pushed inside. This is a flexible material. So cork can be pushed out. So you are not taking it out, neither you are breaking the coil, uh, the, the bottle, but you are rather pushing the cork in, and then you can take out the coil. So you know, this requires some kind of knowledge as well as thinking. Now my point is, that we had three different types of puzzles here. One was discrete in nature. You wanted to pair the socks. So that is discrete knowledge. Mathematical, tic-tac-toe. And then practical. You wanted to take out the coin from the bottle, which was a practical problem that required logic. And in all these problems, there is something which I am not making any mistake. Hello. Okay, hello. Stop. Let me let me finish. Okay, so in these three types of problems, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there were two types of things. One was reasoning. You have to reason it out, and there was a data that was to be matched. Now, starting from the time of, of Aristotle and Socrates, people have been giving thinking to the logical problems in the society that used to occur. And therefore, I have the classical logic which was propounded by Socrates and Aristotle. Both of them were philosophers, logical thinkers, and to some of the logics that they propounded at their time, respective time, were not agreed to by the people who were around. And therefore, they were punished for their propositions at that time. However, they, they, they used the logic and they connected their logic through the connectors of true and false and and all and not. I mean, these are the basic connectors of any logical statement. And they used it even at that time, when the time, at the time of Socrates and Aristotle. If then, a statements are also used to express the theorems, if this, then that. So if the audience is attentive, then the lecture will be beautiful, kind of, you know. So they would always uh, express their uh, classical logic in these terms with the help of these connectors. Very nice. Leave it. Thank you. Hello. Leave it. Yes. Now came the Boolean logic. George Boole, a very respected person, the person who gave rise to the, the Boolean logic and he tried to connect with the, you know, connect with the human thinking through the true and false, yes and no, on and off, and later it was given one and zero, which we now convert into the digital electronics. In 1854, George Boole, he developed the Boolean algebra. And so he tried to connect those, uh, those ones and zeros and the Boolean mathematics through the connectors of yes and no, iron and or. Now, in 1938, if you remember, that was a very important year when, the, when Claude Shannon, he, he invented transistors, the, the semiconductor transistors, and therefore, those logics could be implemented in electronic circuits. Okay, next. What does Boolean logic say? We are now coming to the evolution of the logical theory. What he said, if something is one, it represents a complete membership, and if something is zero, it represents the lack of membership or the absence of membership to a particular set. He tried to explain, I'm giving this example from the electronics engineering or IT sector. If you use 
the Boolean logic and try to explain something like a bulb glows at a voltage of 220 volt. This is a statement which we normally use. This is a bulb that glows at 220 volt. And try to represent in the terms of Boolean mathematics, the Boolean logic, glow if you say 1 and not glow if you say 0. The bulb will glow only at 220 volt and any voltage other than 220, less or more, would certainly not be supposed to glow. You know? Because the statement says that the bulb glows at a supply voltage of 220. So this is discrete of Boolean logic. But normally in practical life we see that the bulb does glow for voltages less or more, you know, unless it is too less that it the, 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 the glow cannot be observed or the voltage is so high that the bulb may get fused. So it does happen. So how can this be represented in a way that the true sense of expression of a human mind can be mathematically represented? So that is how we can say. But let us see the same statement in terms of temperature. If you want to make different temperature as cold, cool, warm and hot. Suppose this is a 20 degree Celsius temperature. Anything less than 20 degree is warm and greater than 20 degree is hot. But you know, we normally do not discretize our expressions in such a fashion that any temperature greater than exactly 20 would be considered as hot and less than that would be warm. No. We would give a margin of even 25 degree or something like that. So this does not reflect the human, uh, you know, sense of expression of a natural life. So came the fuzzy logic to express the human nature. This gentleman Lutfi Zade, an Iranian-born scientist, <coughs> worked at the University of California, Berkeley. He expired last year in 2017. This gentleman, in 1969 somewhere, he propounded the idea of fuzzy logic and he said that we can represent our human thinking somehow in a way that could be very close to the thinking and yet be represented mathematically. And how he did is like this. If something is 100% true, you can give it a membership of 100% or 1 and then if it is less than 100, then you can accordingly assign a value to the degree of which it may become true or false. So let us see the same example of the bulb being glowing at 220 volt. So he said, rather than saying that the bulb glows at a supply voltage of 220, we can say that it glows at around 220 volt. Now the point is, around 220 volt becomes a variable. We have to mathematically represent this 220 volt and if we represent here on this graph, the bulb glows for a voltage 220, 222, 224 unless and then after increasing the voltage beyond some threshold, the bulb may tend to you know get fused and also here the intensity of glow may go down you know as we move down into the voltage. So the, the point is that how many states we can define for representing a, sem, a, a word like around 220. And he said similarly for temperature, what we can say that not exactly 220 volt, less than 20 is warm and greater than 20 is hot, but we can rather provide a margin, a little voltage less, little voltage higher would be accordingly represented. So the more natural and close to human mind reasoning is this way of representing. What he said? He said that around approximately, more or less, slightly, very, 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 could be some of the, you know, hedges of a given variable to you. And all of them can be mathematically represented by a fuzzy set. And he developed a fuzzy set theory which became very popular for the purpose of control engineering. So around 220 can be represented by a set of points. Each point is a measure of the degree to which the phrase around 220 volt is true. 
So let me represent how we can represent. We can collect all those points. The bulb was glowing at 220 volt. Kindly concentrate here. I have given a degree of membership to be 1 for 220 volt because the bulb is supposed to glow fully at 220 volt. Now any voltage less than 220, we can always say that the degree of glow is getting reduced. So it is 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4 unless it comes, you know, this is practically not true because normal bulbs would even glow at 80 degree or 90 degree volts. They will give some intensity but this is how we can represent. Any voltage greater than 220 would again have a lesser value to the membership of around 220 of glow. So how we can collect these points? We can collect in this fashion. The value and the membership value. So any any function that can be represented like this, we can collect all those membership values 1.1, 1 .1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 as mu and they belong to a, to a variable x. If this is a discrete one, this can be an integral. If this is if this is a if it is a continuous one, it is integral. If it is a discrete, it is summation. But they do not mean integration or summation practically. They are collection of points on a given curve. Like this, we have collected the point on this curve. Okay. Now I'm coming to some more funny items. Okay, let me keep the track of time also. So okay, so it's already you know. 12.20. So may I have 10 to 15 minutes time? Yes. Okay. You are going to enjoy it further. Believe me. Well, uh, now how can we really implement Something is there. Yes. Okay. How do we normally make inference into our practical life? Suppose you tell a boy of your family that you reduce the speed of this fan by moving the knob left. So you take this as a knowledge. You have told him to reduce the speed of the fan by moving the knob left. Next day, you tell him that go and increase the speed of the fan. So now he infers from the knowledge that was given yesterday, I have to move the knob right. This is known as the process of inference, inference mechanism. And that we can inculcate even into machines. So, knowledge is, if the water is very hot, you add plenty of cold water in order to make it lukewarm. So, this is the knowledge. Fact is that the water is moderately hot. So, what is the conclusion? You add little cold water. This is, this is what we normally do every day into our, you know, routine of life. But all these very hot, plenty of water, moderately hot, little cold, they require a mathematical representation so that they can be, they can be inculcated into some machinery which can do the work automatically. So that is what they, 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 the soft computing techniques are and that is where they lead us to. So we are talking about the fuzzy relations, we can create some relations with a young man, we can define the youth in this fashion. If somebody is 20 years old, the degree of him being young is 0.6. If 30 years is 0.8. You know, very caref carefully, I have never defined who has got the value membership one. You know, because this is a very controversial thing. Who is the perfect young man? It can never be told. And therefore, I have never given the value one. 0.8 may But then you can always define fast runner. Who is the fast runner? Somebody who can run 10 kilometers per hour has 0.4. 12 kilometers per hour is 0.9. You can even go further. Somebody can be a sprint runner and therefore one can. So if you have these two variables defined by this expression, young and fast runner, you can always decide about an individual, his membership function and then how fast that individual can run you can make an inference through mathematics. And I'm just giving you an example. There is a fuzzy relational system in which you give the input as being young and then from this relational system you can find how fast the runner is. Okay, and it goes like this. You define young, you define a fast runner and then you have a relational operator here. You can do some mathematics through this, you know, 
If I had time of one and a half hours, I would have explained the mathematics that goes behind, but I would skip this. And you can always find that if somebody who is young like this can be a fast runner like this. You know, so we can always infer. Very well. Fuzzy logic, now something history. Fuzzy logic gained importance after Ibrahim Mamdani demonstrated the practical potential of fuzzy logic. You know Ibrahim Mamdani? He is based in Queensland, <coughs> UK. He is an Indian, belongs to Pune. He visited us a, a, a few years back. He delivered a very nice lecture on fuzzy logic at Delton Hall in Delhi. He was the first person to implement the fuzzy theory into engineering control system. So the credit goes to our Indian. A philosophy who was developed in US by an Indian, uh, by an in Iranian born Muslim was given an engineering application by yet another Indian born Muslim, Ibrahim Mamdani. I mean, I try to encourage what the people of your society have been contributing to the greater development of this modern world, we should never be, we should never be thinking very low about that. We should be proud of our legacy that we have been carrying out from the very beginning. Next was again Mamdani. Yeah, yeah I have written here. Because there is a conference in India, which is known as uh, con international conference, known as FUS IEEE. FUS IEEE is held every year. 2013, India was the host. And, you know, professor from ISI Kolkata, N.R. Pal, was the general chair of that conference. And all those great people working around the world in fuzzy logic, they were all assembled at Hyderabad itself. First IEEE 2013 was held in Hyderabad. Some convention center is there. And I was fortunately a participant. Uh, so, Sujinu was there. You know, there are only two fuzzy models for engineering control system. One is known as Takagi Sujinu model. Takagi was there. No, not this way, Takagi. And Sujinu was there in the content. And the another is Ibrahim Mamdani model. Yet, on this, till this date, there are only two fuzzy models that work for engineering control. One is Takagi Sujinu model, they are from Japan. And another is Ibrahim Mamdani model from India. Next is, you know, I would try to skip the difference between fuzzy logic and probability because the mathematicians who had the idea of probability theory, they said that we don't require any logic. Probability theory mathematics is more than sufficient to represent any ambiguous situation. The situation which doesn't correctly represent a, 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 a model mathematics. So I would skip. Please excuse me, because I have to finish my lecture in next 10-15 minutes. Ah. Now what happened beyond fuzzy? The entire soft computing things came into the market. Then fuzzy systems was used for imprecision, anything that was not precise. Then neural networks came, which was meant for learning the situation. Now what happened beyond fuzzy? The entire soft computing things came into the market. Then fuzzy systems was used for imprecision, anything that was not precise. Then neural networks came, which was meant for learning the situation and then doing the inferencing mechanism. Then probabilistic reasoning came to represent the uncertainty and then the evolutionary computing came for optimization. And you know, most of the soft computing techniques require optimization techniques. All those researches are happening in those. Okay. I try to define the machine intelligence here. It is an amalgamation of the various areas of research that we have been carrying out. Here is the soft computing in which we have fuzzy, intuitionistic fuzzy, rough set theory, wave set, fuzzy type 2, neutrosophic logic. Here is my focus. I would come to the neutrosophic logic because this is from where we started. Okay, and then the pattern recognition, nonlinear dynamics, data driven system, hybrid system of you know neuro fuzzy, genetic neuro, fuzzy genetic, fuzzy neurogenetic, and many other combinations are possible to work with. And knowledge based systems are probabilistic, approximate, and case based. All of them taken together, you know, create the machine intelligence system. Sorry. 
well i come to possible soft computing data you know, so far the data that we have known in 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 binary system 0 and 1 in decimal system 0 to 9 but now the data that we might handle into the real life is not only 5 about 5 how do you represent about 5 5 to 6 is yet another data about 5 to 6 so these are all the hedges of 5 that need interpretation mathematically in order to create an intelligent mathematical model for the engineering problems. Now, linguistic data, cheap, very big, not high, medium or bad, you know, these are some of the objectives normally we use with any given function. Now, if we take mathematically as a function, fx is fine, but then what is about fx? So, this, this requires a, a, a case. So, fairly similar, much greater, you know, you have a greater, greater than or equal to, but then much greater is a linguistic hedge, okay. So on these aspects to work with, we have many, you know, aspects, multiple valued logic. During my MTEC dissertation work in IIT Delhi, I worked on multiple valued logic. We tried to create a transistor that can give you three states rather than one on and off an intermediate state was also developed. Lucasini's logic, post logic, fuzzy logic, which came in early 60s. Raf said, wakes it. Raf said, people at IIT Delhi, still people have been working. Uh, Professor Biswas is, is at IIT Delhi, he works in Raf said. And then wakes said, intuitionistic fuzzy logic. His Professor Krasimir Atanasov from Bulgaria the propounder of intuitionistic fuzzy logic, known as IFS. Then type 2, Mendel, Jerry Mendel, if you have heard the name, Mendel is the propounder of type 2 fuzzy logic, and then we have the neutrosophy logic, my boss. So, I give a brief idea of what these logics were. So, uh, this Pollock is the propounder of rough set theory, and he said that any ambiguous phenomena can be represented with approximations lower approximation and higher approximation and then you can give the boundary. Next came the wake set, the Gao and Borer. They said that a given entity may belong or may not belong, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the degree of belongingness is exactly a complement to the degree of non-belongingness. Otherwise, they would be exact replica. So, he said the degree of belongingness could be different from the 1 minus degree of belongingness. And therefore, this logic also worked and wakes it. I have a paper that we published in IEEE on wakes it also. Next came the intuitionistic fuzzy logic. This gentleman, Krasimir Atanasov, is still working in Bulgaria. For that matter, this man is also working, is still working. He is alive, he lives in the US. So, all these scientists that I am talking about, they are all alive, apart from that, uh, you know, last year, we lost that gentleman. It was a great loss to the entire soft computing community in the world. So, well, this intuitionistic fuzzy logic, he said that we have a degree of belongingness, we also have a degree of non-belongingness, but yet the sum of all this may not be one. We have to take care of somebody. And he gave an example. Suppose there are two parties uh, contesting an election. There are few people who work for party A and vote for it. There are few other people who work for party B and vote for it. But then there are many people who do not go for the voting at all. So how do you take care of them? So he said that there should be a logic that will take care of those kind of things. But then all these three categories taken together must be equal to one. They should comprise of the entire universal set that we have been descri describing. Okay. So, we now compare in this form, what I now say is that the fuzzy logic, intuitionistic fuzzy logic, Lucasivis and post logic, wave and rough set theory and classical Boolean logic, all of them has some element to contribute into the newest logic that is known as neutrosophic logic. Okay, this is the gentleman who has propounded the neutrosophic Florentine Sabarandache, he is now working in US and the good point is that he has friendship with all Indian students. Most of his scholars who have been working with him 
are from the Indian subcontinent, may not necessarily India, but they may be from Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, something of that kind. But if you look at the names which are associated with him in the research papers, they mostly seem to be Indian origin. Okay, so this is the gentleman. He said that we can categorize the human thinking into fuzzy sets that was in early 60s. Then he said that it's important, but not the total determination of the human behavior. Fuzzy logic does not. And then to model the complete mental mechanism, we require something which is known as neutrosophic logic given by this person. And he tries to bring all the logics together towards a unitary, formally analyzable, general model of reality and you will appreciate how. Okay, I will skip this. Well, he said that we have many paradoxes in our life. Facts which are true and untrue at the same time. Could you, could you, could you perceive a situation of this kind, a fact which is true and untrue at the same time. The cat theory, the Schrodinger cat theory which is taught in class 12, that explains a little bit of it, that a photon or a particle is present at two different places at the same time. That is what the entire Schrodinger wave equation is. So how can you assume one particle being present at two different places at the same time? But the fact is that it is true. How do we mathematically model these situations which are true and untrue and both being realistic? So he gave an example of that. The paradoxes of life he took. And he also made a difference between relative truth and absolute truth. Relative falsehood an absolute falsehood. If something is truth, we give one. But there are certain things which are universal truth. The sun rises in the east. So unless it is the doomsday, the sun rises in the east. So long as we are alive. And therefore, that absolute truth should have a higher value than the, than the, the truthfulness which is uh, uh, relative in nature. Okay, so next is this quantum mechanics example I already gave. So what he said that for any given you know, item, we can have three membership, truth value, indeterminate value and the falsehood value and all of them can be three at the same time, can be one. So something which is true, something which is false and if both are true, true and false existing together, it means that the, the, there is a third element that is ambiguity and that can also be represented with one. Now let's see, this is a very popular paradox of Epimenides. Gentlemen, I'm going to finish my lecture next five minutes. So be patient and look at this example. Epimenides was a great philosopher. He belonged to a, you know, Crete island, very close to Greece, Athens. So by the side of Athens, there is an island this gentleman belonged to that place. So like Socrates and Aristotle, he was yet another philosopher. What he said once, he said, all Cretans are liars. So the people would become naturally furious. How can you say that all Cretans are liars? He said, I would explain to you, come. People gathered around him and he said, if all Cretans are liars, I'm also a Cretan, I'm a liar, so whatever I say is a lie. <laughs> and therefore, Cretans are not liars. You understand? So, this is known as a paradox. Some paradoxes of the system are the realities of our life. And we carry on with many such paradoxes, and we are still alive. But they have been given a mathematical modeling to represent such situations to make the life probably more difficult, I don't know. So this man could survive only because you could explain. So unless what he says is correct, he cannot become a Cretan. And unless, you know, he is correct, his sentence cannot be correct. 
and therefore, you know, this is a vicious cycle. So, in order to disprove his assertion, he will have to admit that whatever said was correct. So, you know, this, this is a very nice example and you may look for this example on the internet. It's a wonderful example to reflect the paradox of a real life situation. Next is this, neutrosophic logic. It means neutral logic. Means it doesn't get biased towards anybody. Whatever is the face value, if it is true, okay, one. If not true, one. And then take both of it together. Don't worry that not true has to be always necessarily one minus the true. No. So that is why it is known as neutral logic. Okay. So what is said? That you take a value t for truthfulness, i for intermediate, and f for false. Add both of them, it should be on, and n could be even greater than 3. Why? Because if truthfulness is the absolute truthfulness, then you can give a 1 plus. You know, so let us see this example. What is said that all these values can be between 0 minus and 1 plus with an open ended bracket. So you have a chance that there could be some situation which will add up to even greater than 3. So the mathematics starts from here. We have got the neutrosophic logic that is needed and we have plenty of examples. And how do we represent in the neutrosophic set theory? It starts from here, I will skip. Uh, there are many examples I have tried to cite here because my lecture was supposed to be for one and a half hour and therefore I included many more things. A cloud is a very nice example to define a neutrosophic logic. You can't describe a particular small cloud present elsewhere whether it is part of a bigger cloud or not, does it belong to this cloud or that cloud, could be described in this fashion. It's a very nice example of a neutrosophic logic application. Okay. So, diameter review. This is what uh, Florentine says that fuzzy logic, if you start thinking beyond fuzzy logic, it becomes neutrosophic logic. And how he said, and I have taken an example uh, where I have explained. Yes, he said, that the neutrosophic logic becomes a Boolean logic if the intermediate value is always 0 and the true and false are either 0 or 1. So, the neutrosophic logic becomes n equal to 1. It becomes a multiple valued logic if the truthfulness is greater than or equal to 0, i is also, means truthfulness, indeterminacy and falsehood, both all the three become you know, in between 0 and 1. Then fuzzy data, he said that there is no indeterminacy in fuzzy. You have to be either true or false and truthfulness and falsehood must add up to 1. So this is fuzzy logic. So this retrosophic logic boils down to fuzzy logic and intuitionistic fuzzy logic says that even if there is an indeterminacy, all the three must add up to 1. But neutrosophic logic says that no, there could be situations in which and all the three added would might result into three or even more than that. So I have taken this example of a mobile logo. I wish that I could explain, but I have I am leaving my presentation, gentlemen, for you to go through and take an opportunity to go through these examples as to how we we are trying to implement the engineering control system to a very ordinary example of a moving robo and coming closer to an obstacle and how the movement of the robo can be controlled through three different logics one boolean another fuzzy and the third one is through the uh, neutrosophic logic so all the three examples i have given with the rules given i will skip that and i will directly come to the last slide and the slide that i have received from Florentine himself, he is a good friend of mine. Yes, you understand the point. When fuzzy logic was started in the early 60s, nobody accepted the logic. Till 80s, there was no IEEE transaction on fuzzy systems. All the fuzzy papers were either published in the man cyber um, uh, man system and cybernetics or into the IEEE transaction on neural networks. It was only early 90s that the IEEE agreed to publish a IEEE transaction on fuzzy systems. Means 
even fuzzy system which is now a well established engineering mechanism was not accepted by the majority of the engineering community as a as a established method of engineering it took time to be established similar is the situation for retrosophic logic today so florentine says that we are hitting we are hitting the market we are hitting the scientists we are trying to tell our point that yes this can be a solution for most of the problem but believe me now n number of people have been working in this area this area one of my own student worked on the neutrosophic neural network so he developed a neural network using neutrosophic logic and it was quite widely accepted and therefore there is chance that this new logic will flourish and we will be able to gain our foot into the market and what he says that we are making noise so among all these birds somewhere you may find me here is florentine himself and he says that keep making noise one day the people would listen that is what we wish and i urge upon all my young friends that this is a forthcoming new technology new logic area if you start working in this you have a ample chance of making original research into engineering applications and soft computing fortunately the person who is the who is the propounder of this logic is very close to the indian community he replies earlier than you wish earlier than you think and he involves himself in whatever you write to him so this man is a very popular man but remember the world has yet not accepted it is a full fledged logic till today it will take time hello sir uh, my name is nusrat and i am also from lucknow wow uh, so okay. i want to ask you one thing uh, that uh, in the neurological concept you are telling about fuzzy and all other things uh, we can use these things in geospatial concept also actually i am a remote sensing and gis guy and uh, i was working with a machine learning and ai concept so i want your help if you are more expert in uh, this new neurological yeah. concept bahut acha hai bahut acha sawal hai aapka aapne ye pucha ke gis ke andar yes, kya hum is neurosophic logic ka istemal kar sakte hain of course sir yahi sawal hai sir of course bahut acha sawal hai dekhiye main aapko wo slide dikhane ki koshish kar raha hu jahan par humne baat ki hai यस यहाँ पर जो है ये तो खैर जनरलाइज लॉजिक हो गया यस देखिए हम लोग यहाँ सॉफ्ट कॉम्प्यूटिंग टेक्निक्स हैं एंड द लेटेस्ट टेक्निक नहीं नहीं आप वही देखिए हमारी आवाज तो पहुंच रही है तो फिर ये तो आपको जरूर आना पड़ेगा अ पर्सन फ्रॉम लखनऊ हैजीन बाई पीपल फ्रॉम हैदराबाद ठीक है 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 आप आप दिखाइए सर आवाज तो तो नहीं 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 दिखनी चाहिए देखिए ऐसा कि सॉफ्ट ये सारे हैं एंड यू नो द द द लेटेस्ट टेक्निक बेटर इन सॉल्यूशन आई अंडरस्टैंड जीआईएस रिक्वायर मेनी सॉफ्ट कंप्यूटिंग टेक्निक्स एंड Till date, we do not have any MATLAB toolbox for neurosophic logic. We have toolbox for fuzzy logic. For this, you have to write your own program in MATLAB. Sir, I have written an algorithm which has been usually identify the diseases in, in all over the India, and it has been recently used by ISRO, and they are using this, and I am working on it. So this is the concept of neuro uh, scrofics you are telling about. Actually, the thing is in this uh, Dijkstra algorithm is also there, which is used for optimization and all those things. but uh, what is happening to identifying the objects is not that much crucial this technology is not that much crucial it has some impact because the objects are very dissimilar somewhat we have elephants elephants can also be counted as a mountain yeah yeah no i agree i understood your point so don't use the technology if it is not required of course you go for the simplest one yes sir and you know try to make your things simpler I mean, these are for high-end engineering problems. And those who are already using some of them, they may try the neutrosophic logic to get a better result. You know, to to encompass all the ambiguity of the system, which they which may not have been addressed so far, they will be addressed here. 
So, thank you very much. I okay. think the, uh, the, this is enough. Okay. Yes, thank you. Any other question? I do have a question. Uh, please. From a teaching and a learning point of view. From a teaching and a learning point of view, since a person is working already with fuzzy logic, how difficult or how easy? Again, I'm asking a fuzzy question. Is it to transform from fuzzy logic to neuro fuzzy? How difficult is it or how easy? No, it's it not is? a question of transforming from fuzzy to neuro fuzzy. Okay. Fuzzy to neutrosophic. Okay. So it's a name is different. Neuro fuzzy is a combination of fuzzy logic yes, and neural and networks. Neuros. That is already in the market. Of course, you require a challenge. As I told you, that for fuzzy logic, we have an established toolbox which is supplied by the <coughs> MATLAB and you have an easier go through. But for this, you have to work on the programming on your own. So, challenge has to be taken and you have to agree for some element of failure as well. But however, any new step, you know, any endeavor that forces you to do some new technology would certainly give something which will be really fruitful in your life. So, I wish that you adopt this one, apart from adopting the fuzzy logic that you have already done. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Yeah, like. So, what is the basic difference between the fuzzy logic and type two fuzzy logic? Type two. Oh, type two. So, uh, before you really ask, I will address this question: fuzzy logic and type two fuzzy logic. See, uh, about five is a fuzzy word. Five to six is a type two. So, Jerry Mendel who is this again working in, and he took a workshop in this fuzz IEEE, 2013. Three hours workshop on fuzzy type two. And I attended that workshop. So he said that if there is no definite value, and there is a range of value that comes under fuzzy type two. So that difference is clear? Okay, yes. So you said that one of your students has written on uh, Neutrosophic neural networks. Right. Can you l explain it a little bit uh, in brief uh, what yeah. it was about? Yeah, see, you see, already there are works on fuzzy neural. You know, the combinations, you know, here, neurofuzzy, genetic neural, fuzzy genetic, fuzzy neurogenetic, and therefore you can make another combination of neutrosophic neural network. So, neural neutrosophic. So, it's a combination of two technologies. One used for, you know, uh, uh, for uh, recognition and another used for, uh, you know, optimization. So, it's a, uh, it's a combination of two different logics giving a new experiment. That is what it was done. Also, sir, you said, uh, as you said, uh, con uh, fuzzy logic is used in control systems. Right. Uh, so, neutrosophic fuzzy systems, uh, as you said. So, any specific applications of this? Ah, that's, that's a very nice question. Not yet. It has not been tried in industry so far because mostly the industry do not have any such, you know, <coughs> paradoxical situation. They may be ambiguous, but there are no paradoxes uh, involved in, in, in industries. But of course, the, the stock market, the economics, social behavior, they would probably find a better application of the neutrosophic logic where we have a chance of, uh, you know, the existence of paradoxes. Is and there any specific field where you have thought about applying neuro? Yeah, that is what I named, few of them. Few of them. <laughs> so, thank you very much. All right. <laughs>